So the next example is about exergy. And um, the problem statement tells us there is an argon gas that expands from 3.5 megapascal and 100 degrees Celsius to 500 kilopascal in an adiabatic expansion valve. So we know expansion valves, right? They are restricting the flow. These are steady flow devices, but it restricts the flow. So it drops the uh, pressure, it drops the temperature of the substance that we are dealing with in this case the argon gas so let's write down the inlet conditions inlet conditions are 3.5 megapascal and 100 degree celsius and exit conditions are given uh, to us in this expansion valve as um, 500 kilopascal so we are only given the pressure it's all right and they also tell us that the environment conditions are 100 kilopascal and 25 degrees celsius so they give us p naught the dead state conditions which are 100 kilopascal and t naught dead state temperature which is 25 so we need to figure out the exergy of the argon gas at the inlet per unit mass. So what they're asking is to find at the inlet the exergy per unit mass. In the part B of that problem, we need to determine the exergy destruction per unit mass during the process. So lowercase x destroyed exergy, we need to figure that out also so at the final part of this problem we will have to figure out the second law efficiency for this process okay so the first part uh, part a is easy because we have an equation if we are given the properties uh, of that argon gas at the first state or in this case inlet conditions right we are given those conditions properties so we know the temperature we know the pressure at the inlet this helps us to figure out the rest of the properties uh, easily first of all um, we know that this is an ideal gas right let's write down the equation for the exergy per unit mass and see how we can deal with the properties uh, in that equation Okay, so if we want to figure out, let's go to the next page. The equation for that is H1 minus H0 minus T0 S1 minus S0. These are lowercase s entropy per unit mass um so very good so one easy way if we are dealing with an ideal gas we can replace h1 minus h naught with cp delta t or in other words cp the specific heat t1 minus t naught and we also know for an ideal gas, we can replace S1 minus S0 as such. We can say C P ln T1 over T0 minus R ln P1 minus P0. Okay, so now let's take a look at then can we figure out those properties in those equ in this equation or we can figure out from table a1 tables for the argon gas and temperatures are known and um, cp we figured it out from the tables also it looks like we can use this equation then let's plug in the information um here okay and calculate what is the exergy for this argon gas at the inlet 
Okay, so CP is zero point five two zero three. Temperature difference, unit doesn't matter even in a temperature difference. You can use Kelvin or degrees Celsius because at the end it's the temperature difference. It's a one unit degree difference. So, which is the, here what it is in the CP unit, it represents Kelvin. You can use degrees Celsius there too because it is for the one degree change. So the unit of temperatures doesn't matter. We can use temperature 100 minus 25 degrees Celsius. And we continue to that equation. I will use the continue from here. So T naught is we need to remember use the Kelvin scale for this. 25 means 298 Kelvin and continue writing cp ln temperature is a t1 is uh 100 degrees celsius we need to add 273 to convert to kelvin so it is 373 kelvin over uh 298 kelvin okay so let me see okay that uh, we had 100 degrees celsius for the inlet but outside is 25 very good so we convert those to kelvin and we continue uh inside the parentheses there is minus r is 0 0.2081 for argon gas and we multiply this with let's see LN thirty five hundred kilopascal over hundred. Okay, so so they were a, they were giving us the pressure in terms of megapascal. We had to convert it to kilopascal to match with the units, and um, because they need to cancel each other. So if you solve from this equation, the answer should be for the exergy per unit mass or the work potential of that argon gas at the inlet is actually. 224.7 kilojoule per kilogram so one kilogram of the argon gas at that state has a work potential of 224.7 kilojoule okay we found it and then let's continue with part b in part b we were asked to calculate exergy destroyed per unit mass and we have an equation for that so to figure that out you might be able to use exergy balance uh, you can check that if it works the exergy balance if it works or you can use this equation that we know there is a relationship between the exergy destroyed and the generated entropy that relationship we can use which is T naught times the generated entropy per unit mass. So this equation, let's think about if we can use it in this case. Okay. So the generated entropy we calculated from the entropy balance. Okay. So we can write the entropy balance per unit mass for a steady flow device. And it will look like this. The rate of entropy... Uh, actually, let me write the, the rate of entropy getting in minus the rate of entropy getting out 
plus the generated entropy rate of entropy generation is equal to zero. It is equal to zero because with time, uh, entropy change in your system uh, doesn't change. So since this is the rate form of the entropy balance, it goes to zero. Um, since entropy is a property, it doesn't change with time in your system in a steady flow device. Okay, so what are these? These are mass flow rate times lowercase s in minus mass flow rate times lowercase s out plus mass flow rate times entropy generated per unit mass is equal to zero. We can divide each term to the mass flow rate, which will give us the, rate of, uh, the entropy getting in per unit mass minus the entropy getting out per unit mass plus the entropy generated per unit mass is equal to zero. Um, well, what does it look like if I solve it for the generated entropy per unit mass? It looks like S out minus S in. In other words, if in is represented by number one and out is represented by uh, number two, meaning the inlet and exit, right? And we can say then this is equal to S2 minus S1. Very good. So what does it mean is we can actually then re replace that as the entropy generated per unit mass with S2 minus S1 in this case, which we have an, for, for an ideal gas, we have an equation for the entropy difference that we can use. Um, right? So we can use that equation. Okay. Okay, so let's continue writing it down. So now the question is, we pretty much know most of the terms in this equation. However, we don't know. Oh, uh, in the, by the way, we made a mistake here. We, we were supposed to say, I'm sorry, let's correct that because it is, we are not uh, using inlet and exit uh, conditions, right? So we should write, uh, I think that is T2 over T1 minus R ln P2 over P1. Okay, so um, in this situation, uh, we don't know T2, okay? So here you need to remember something, which is the condition we know for a throttling valve that has to be satisfied, which is the inlet enthalpy is equal to exit enthalpy. This was, we learned from in open systems that for a thro throttling valve, this condition is there, right? So inlet entropy is equal to the exit entropy. Um, so what does that mean for an ideal gas? So if you remember uh, enthalpy and inter specific internal energy, specific enthalpy, those are only depend on the temperature or only at a function of temperature for an ideal gas. So if enthalpies are equal in the inlet and the exit, then that means the temperatures are also equal to each other for the inlet and the exit. This is very important to remember, okay? 
So what does it tell us then? If that is the situation, this term will go to 0 because T1 is equal to T2 in an ideal gas. And if we have a throttling valve. Um, okay, so our equation then simplified into T naught minus R L N P two over P one. Okay, now we can solve it in the next page. Okay, so um, T naught is two hundred and ninety eight. R is 0 0.2081 and uh, exit pressure is 500, inlet pressure is 3500, which gives us the rate, the exergy destroyed per unit mass to be 120 kilojoule per kilogram. Uh, actually, there is 120.7 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay, so that means uh, this much exergy uh, the our the work potential is being destroyed per unit mass of argon gas. All right. So now we have to calculate. Okay. Now we have to calculate um, the second law efficiency. All right. Second law efficiency at part C. To calculate second law efficiency, we need to remember a formula for that. And the formula for a general formula for the second law efficiency is 1 minus exergy destroyed over exergy expanded or available to us. So basically, therefore, the exergy that is um, destroyed is 120.7, and the difference in exergies in between inlet and exit, it is 224.7 minus 100 and 104. Um, kilojoule per kilogram and it turns out if you do that you will see it turns out it's zero so it is normal this is zero because in an expansion valve, it is actually a very wasteful device and it destructs all the exergy or the work potential that is available. So therefore, basically, it tells us that the second law efficiency is zero. Not, none of those uh, exergies or the work potentials available to us in a throttling valve is actually utilized or recovered so the answer is therefore zero